In this video, I'll be sharing a few five things that you need to know before you even think of diving into tech and start learning code. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Hey, what's up? If you're new to the channel, my name is Krishan and I've been a developer for five years. Since becoming a developer, I've been documenting my journey from living in my car to reaching a 200K salary as an engineer in tech. And throughout these last five years, I made it a goal to be as transparent as possible as I could be with every single one of you in sharing my struggles and sharing the things that I've enjoyed and also the things that I've hated. And so these next five things that I'll be sharing with you are things that I generally wish that I knew about the tech industry before actually diving into it so I could at least be prepared for it or if not realize that tech maybe isn't meant for me. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start with number one. The first thing that I wish I knew before diving into tech was fully understanding that money does not equal happiness. Now. We all know that money doesn't equal happiness. Yet, for those of us who didn't have money, and I didn't have money a couple years ago, I was living in my car, I was homeless. I always thought that once I reached that milestone, that milestone salary of 200K a year, that life would be perfect. That all my problems would be solved, I would be happy as hell. Now, one thing I wanna clear up with y'all is this, is that yes, a lot of my problems are no longer problems, but inconveniences. Someone slashed the tires on my Porsche, I had to fix it, it cost about 700 bucks, fine. <laughs> it, I mean, yes, it was an inconvenience, but it wasn't necessarily a life-changing problem for me, right? You get sick, you need to go to ER, paying that $200 copay isn't a problem as much as it used to be, where if I had to go in and pay $200 for my copay going to ER, that would be very difficult. Now I'd have to choose endure the pain or endure the financial pain, right? Physical pain or, or financial pain. Now that I have a good job in tech, I have the best health insurances that you could possibly get in the United States because health insurance in tech is very competitive as well. Now I get the best health insurance. I can see the best doctors and it isn't as expensive as it used to be, right? I remember all of these things, but aside from that, one thing that I realized was that the more money you make, the more responsibilities you have. And I guess you could say, it really, it doesn't make sense. More money, more problems. Where I was just enjoying, when I was making 70K a year, you just receive a problem. Now with more money do you make, you don't just receive one problem to work on, you receive multiple problems. And that did take some adjustment on my end as well. To go from just a mid-level developer to become a senior developer relations engineer in tech, it is a huge difference. Now, the pay is amazing, right? You literally have nothing to worry about. I'm saving so much money out buying my house middle of next year, right? But as amazing as that is, I'm not gonna lie. All these different responsibilities, if you're not mentally prepared for that, can take a toll on you. But again, it's worth it, right? I love what I do, I absolutely enjoy it, but please understand that yes, you see developers out there who have really big salaries, but with those big salaries come with a lot more responsibilities. Aside from that, you have to continuously elevate your skill, etc., to make sure that you still qualify to make that high income. Okay, number two, when it comes to tech, yes, getting that first job as a developer, it doesn't matter how much to pay you, take that job, experience is gold, through that experience, even if it doesn't matter if you're manager, even if the manager is horrible, you need to stick through it because through that experience, you can leave your job in a year, if not two years, and get paid even double, right? So that's true. <laughs> but one thing that I've learned after being in tech for five years is that, again, it's not just about the money, number two, but it's also finding the right managers to work with and the right, and the right colleagues to work with. And I'm going to tell you this, it's not easy. Just because a company pays this much, this well, does not mean that you'll have this much of a work-life balance does not mean that you'll be this happy even though the pays up here doesn't mean that your happiness will be up there either and so one thing i've learned was that for me yes fortunately i can find jobs that pay very well but i think more important than anything is that you need to find a company that you'll actually enjoy working with that you'll find colleagues that you actually will enjoy working with on a daily basis and why is it so important we live in a world where everyone works remote now in an office experience everyone is nicer than they really are but when you go remote, <laughs> it's totally different, right? And so finding that right company to work for, I feel like is more important than even the income itself. So for me, myself, as y'all know, I left my last job. I paid really well and my pay wasn't go even higher if I remained there, but I couldn't see myself remaining there because I just, my, my, my happiness, right? My happiness wasn't matching that income level, I guess you could say. Yes, my bills were taken care of. Yes, I could take care of my family, but for certain reasons, my happiness was still only down here. Hence, that is why I actually left that company and started looking for new jobs. <laughs> okay, so let's go to number three. Number three, this is very important that this industry is very competitive. Now, yes, 
Everyone's fighting for these insane salaries. I know quite a few people who make 500K a year, 750K a year. I know a person who's a manager at Facebook who makes about just under $1 million a year. Now, they do work a lot of hours. They work around 50 to 60 hours a week, which is kind of understandable if you want to make a million dollars a year, right? Now, aside from that, the field is very competitive. And what I mean by that is that for the rest of your career, one thing that you'll continue doing until you retire is that you will continuously learn new technology. Five or six years ago, everyone was doing jQuery, PHP was a thing. I mean, PHP is still around. jQuery is still around. People are still using it at their companies. I see them everywhere. But if you want to be in demand, you need to be elite when it comes to React.js. You need to know Node.js, right? Uh, I mean, the Mern stack in general, that's huge. Angular, now React, from what, I, from what I'm experiencing, React is way more in demand than Angular. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. And even aside from that, you, you need to be able to work with different technologies, working with things like Svelte.js, Tailwind CSS is blowing up. It's becoming very popular. These new technologies, you need to keep learning because that is in demand. Right. And again, five or six years from now, maybe React.js will not be a thing anymore. Maybe Tilman will not be a thing anymore. Uh, there's new CSS processors are coming out. So again, this is something that you'll continuously do for the rest of your career. Now, I love learning new technologies. I even started creating my own tutorials when it comes to APIs and etc. But please understand, this is a lifelong commitment to learning technologies. But is it worth it? I would say yes i'm only making around 200k a year but that will only continue to go up as i elevate my skill and as i learn to become even a better leader which is even more important right number four burnout is real in tech as a software engineer front-end developer back-end developer machine learning data scientist whatever you want to call yourself cybersecurity, burnout is very real i know way too many developers that work in tech who are burned out but they have to continue to work because they need to support the family especially because a large majority of us, which what it feels like a large majority of us work from home now. And because we all work from home, there isn't a separation between work and not work anymore. It's very hard, at least for me, to actually separate the two because this desk that's in front of me that you see that I'm sitting on right now, I use for both my personal life and my work life. <laughs> at least my laptop, I'm working on the same desk. And so unlike before, when you worked in the office nine to five, you were just working nine to five or nine to six, whatever. You get out of office, you don't feel guilty, you go home. <laughs> but even if you're just as productive at home than you are at work, even though you're done by five or 6 p.m., sometimes, at least for me, I feel like I still didn't do enough. And then you end up working more hours and then you end up opening Slack later at night and responding to messages even though you're off because you're still at home where you work and where you don't work, if that makes sense. And so, at least for me, I was on the verge of burning out. I was working so many hours. When I was working at New Relic, my colleagues would constantly tell me, Chris, you need to calm down, you need to relax, you're doing too much. Burnout is real. And I think that's something you have to understand and learn to fight and learn to balance. And that is why it's also very important to have a good manager that can help you balance that out. Last but not least, number five, and this is very important. This is the best part, this is the best part. Now, the last thing, and there's many things you need to learn, of course, in regards to tech, but last but not least, when you get three years, four years, five years of experience in tech, please understand this. Opportunities will be limitless for you as long as you keep elevating your skill. I've been in tech for more than five years now. It is unbelievable knowing the amount of opportunities that I have for me if I ever decided to leave a job. For example, my first job as a junior developer, I was stuck there for two years. They're mistreating me, micromanagement, etc. They lied to me. But I was stuck there because I didn't have enough experience. After two years, I went to entrepreneur. I was there for about two years as well. And I wanted to stay there for five years and they laid me off. And then after I got laid off, because of networking and because of experience, having four years of experience already, I found two new jobs in three days. I chose one of the two jobs. I was there for 11 months. That company didn't do that well. Ended up leaving that company. After 11 months, got a new job that more than doubled my salary than that last job. And then I left that job. And now even for me right now, there are many opportunities. Now, I'm not trying to brag at all whatsoever. What I'm trying to say is that if you're willing to go through all these difficulties, through the competition, facing bad managers, bad colleagues, it's hard to work with. From making sure that you don't burn out, making sure you balance all that out. Fight through that for four years, five years, and after five years, and after 10 years. As you continue your career in tech, you'll have so many more opportunities. And to be honest, you'll make more money than you thought you could ever imagine. I always thought that I'd only make $90,000 a year for the rest of my life. I'm making more than double that. 
not including YouTube, not including my side hustles. So what I'm trying to say is yes, for me, tech is way worth it. The opportunities are amazing. The pay is amazing. Now, depending on the company, the work-life balance is amazing. Just understand what you'll have to go through for the first three to five years before you reach that income level you're looking for. Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed the video. This is Chris Sean. This is Life of Developer. I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.